here we are at the Ataturk Dam, um, which was uh, created um, in the uh, early 1980s and opened in the early 1990s um, on the river Euphrates. And the reservoir that was created behind it uh, unfortunately drowned one of the most important uh, early Neolithic sites, a place called Navali Chori. Um, and this dated to around 8,000 to 8,500 BC. And there was a cult building there, you know, a place of, of, of religious or ritual ac activity, which had two huge monoliths in the centre of it, um, a terrazzo floor, like a, a you know, ground limestone mortar floor um, and 12 other pillars around the outside and this was the first time that the t-shaped pillars was ever seen in connection with with this culture um, and also it was realized for the first time that they were anthropomorphic in appearance in other words they represented humans and that the t-shaped terminations represented their heads um, and the central monolith um, that remained when the excavators worked there in the 1980s um, looked like something out of um, 2001 A Space Oddity um, Odyssey and, um, um, and I mean you know you look at it I mean when I first put you know clapped eyes on it in 1996 I mean I just looked at it I thought I, you know this is just like some kind of weird alien monument basically um, and this was my first introduction to the, the, the stone building culture of southeast Anatolia uh, and of course one of the people that actually worked at that site was Professor Klaus Schmidt um, who went on to discover Gobekli Tepe in the mid 1990s um, and he recognised immediately at Gobekli Tepe that this site was you know early Neolithic because he'd worked at Navali Chori if he hadn't have done that there's a chance that we may have lost it completely, you know, just in the same way that we've now lost Navali Chori because Gobekli Tepe, that particular hill, was scheduled to become a quarry to provide uh, stone for the Urfa to Marden Road. So we'd have lost that site as well. But luckily, all of the monuments, including the remaining uh, monolith at Navali Chori, was preserved and has been taken to a local museum and uh, we hope to see it on display soon. Okay, here we see before us the reconstructed temple that was found at a place called Navali Chori, which is in the extreme northern part of the Shanli Urfa province. Um, and this was a place that was actually uh, first discovered in the 1980s and work went on there through until the reservoir that um, accompanied the opening of the Ataturk Dam swamped the area, the site itself, the Neolithic site dating back to about 8500 BC. Um, and by that time the archaeologists were in a full rescue dig, dig mode and they had to pull out everything that was found there um, and put it in storage and here it is in its glory in Shanlerfer's new museum. Now just like the structures at Gobekli Tepe most of which are uh, slightly earlier in age this probably dates as I say to about 8500 BC you have two central monoliths both of which are anthropomorphic or human-like in appearance. You have uh, on the surviving example of the pillar here, the crooked arms coming down and ended in hands at the front on the area of the abdomen. You have the twin lines dropping vertically at the front indicating some kind of garment that the, um, that the figure is wearing um, and you see similar anthropomorphic features on the remains of the 12 pillars that were once in the walls of the structure. Now originally there were 12 but for some reason they upped this to 13 uh, in a subsequent phase around 8000 BC. 
But this, this connection with the, the number 12, clearly a, uh, a celestial number, uh, is found also at Quebec Tepe in enclosure D. There was originally 12 uh, pillars surrounding the, the central two monoliths. Um, and also it was most likely 12 surrounding the two central monoliths in enclosure C as well. But this is a slightly later type of structure for the simple reason that it's rectilinear in shape. In other words, it's on a square plan uh, and the size that's given for it is around 40 metres by 40 metres. But what we also know is that this structure, when it was in its original position, faced due northeast to southwest. I mean, that the precision is remarkable. Uh, this was checked by engineer Rodney Hale, and there must have been some specific purpose for this. Behind the structure was some kind of a hill, the tepe itself, but on the other side of it, you had a direct view down towards a branch of the Euphrates River known as the Kantara. Um, and it, clearly, this was probably one of the reasons why it was actually placed here, so that uh, people could take advantage of the fish in the water and use uh, the water for drinking uh, itself. And this statue here, I would say is an image of the first angel, the first ever representation of an angel. And the reason I say that is that this particular item, which uh, I presume was found at uh, the Vali Chori, I think, is has this long extended head, uh, very much like the, the front of the T-shaped pillars. Um, but he, he seems to have his, his arms folded. But what's most intriguing is that he's quite clearly got wings. Around each side you can see these vertical lines, which clearly suggest that this has been done on purpose. But when I say wings, it's probably actually a feather coat that is being stylized in an abstract form to become wings. And I mean, since we know from the Book of Enoch that the watchers in there, known as the uh, That the, sorry, the angels in there, known as the Watchers, are shown with feather coats in the descriptions given in the book. That before angels actually gained physical wings, they actually had feather coats, iridescent feather coats, in one of the descriptions. So. As I said, I think it's uh, an impression of the first angel. The floor also is interesting. Here it's very, very flat. And in the original structure, they discovered this terrazzo floor, which is a, a, a very early form of mortar or concrete that was made using a burnt lime uh, mixture. And this was, this was put together, put in place, and perfectly smoothed over to create an absolutely perfect floor for use for rituals and ceremonies. And of course, as to actually what went on here in the past, we have absolutely no idea. As I said, it is from a slightly later phase than the big structures like enclosures C and D at Gobekli Tepe. The alignment, as I said, is northeast to southwest. Uh, it may well be that some kind of star alignments are involved but we don't really know what was beyond this and whether there was any kind of um, possibility of viewing the horizon, whether this was an artificial mound or simply a natural hill. Uh, if it was, 
I still don't see a problem with it being focused towards the northeast because we have in the area beyond the two central pillars uh, what's quite clearly a niche that you might call an altar area and we know that this is where this large head with the snake like feature on the back of the, the cranium was actually found. The face had been smashed and it seemed to have been covered over as if through some kind of iconoclastic act to try and, you know, uh, kill the spirit of it. But that was contained within that niche. So for some reason it does seem as if that really was at that time seen as a holy of holies, some kind of special place and that the northeast was important here. This stone head has always intrigued me. It's got no face on it, unfortunately. There's nothing left there. But the back of it is very interesting. It's slightly larger than a human size. It's kind of giant size. But it has this very intriguing serpent on the back of it. And you can just see that if I get close up there. You can see, almost see the eyes on it, the shape of the head, which is very similar to the shape of the goddess carving or etching that we see on another piece of rock. Her head is actually shaped like that. So maybe she was like some shaman, but this is intriguing because this looks remarkably like ancient Vedic ponytail, which is what you get in India and other parts of the world um, in prehistory. So is there a Vedic connection here at the Vali Churi? Would they? I think when the archaeologists did the work at Navali Chori in the 1980s and by the way Klaus Schmidt this is where he um, you know he first did all his early work in the pre-pottery Neolithic culture of uh, southeastern Anatolia that's how he was able to come to Gebekli and recognize the style of carvings scattered about on the floor of the hill on the, the summit of the hill um, to recognize that they were so old but when the archaeologists did that, they may not have realised that the large pillars in the centre of the cult building actually were T-shapes. They thought they were just uh, support pillars. Whereas quite clearly we now know that almost certainly they were massive tower monoliths that were much higher than, than what you've got here uh, and that would have ended in this T-shape and one of them was missing anyway. They found small f fragments of it, um, you know, to the, um, to the, what would it have been, to the north, south, or to the east of the other erect pillar. So they just assumed that there was a roof here. I don't think they found any evidence. So it could well be that this was an open air temple. And if that's the case, then I'm going to estimate at the moment that behind this cult building the hill would have risen up to approximately that which is about 25 to 30 degrees elevation. So it'd be interesting to see what exactly rises up out of the starry sky at that very point. Well, here we see the outer area of the cult building of Navali Chori, which is over here. And we can see that this stepped retaining walls and within them are more T-shaped pillars. But these pillars and those that correspond on the, the left side, on the opposite uh, over there, are much smaller. And this tells us almost certainly that they were added at a much later date. Uh, why they were there, maybe for aesthetic purposes, maybe to extend the power of this, this cult building, this religious building, we don't know. But we see very small T-shaped pillars like this at Karahen Tepe, which is one of the reasons that tells us that Karahen Tepe came quite late on in the day, probably between 8,500 and 8,000 BC um, and that uh, although it was part of the same culture, maybe a split off group, uh, that um, it wasn't around at the same time 
that Gobekli Tepe was in its uh, heyday from about 9,500 to 9,000 BC. This one is very intriguing as well because it's got a gentleman there with a vulture or some kind of bird holding its head, much like we see at Chatelhoyak. There's also examples at Gobekli Tepe as well here in the museum. And what does that mean? Is that carrying the head away? Is it like, the, the, as Andrew says, the, the, the movement of the soul to the next world? This one's very interesting as well. This is some kind of statue. Again, it looks like it's got wings coming out the back of it. It could also be a representation of a vulture holding the head. Now, this one is actually from Navali Churi. This one also is from Navali Churi, very similar to what we find obviously at Gobekli Tepe, which is where this one is from. So, and you can see like the arms sort of bent backwards and the face is missing and there's something huge on the back of it. So, and this one as well, and we see the V-neck here. One thing that, that's making me think, we know that uh, various of the structures at Gobekli Tepe seem to be aligned towards the north-northwest um, and the setting of the bright star uh, Deneb in Cygnus, um, and obviously with it, the Milky Way, which would have uh, been at the same position. But this has a clear orientation towards the northeast. The niche, the altar-like niche, is confirmation of that. And if it is a natural hill behind it, as is depicted here in Chandelurfa Museum, then somebody might say, well, you wouldn't have been able to see any stars from here. Well, firstly, we don't know precisely what type of roof might have been on here, or even if it did have a roof. But it is possible, of course, that the people inside here could have been watching the stars rise over that hill in line with the monoliths, and that exactly over the brow of that hill may have risen the same stars as feature in the alignments at Gobekli Tepe. In other words, uh, Deneb in Cygnus, the Milky Way that would have then risen high up into the sky. Uh, there is that possibility. So although it's an a absolute different orientation to many of the earlier enclosures at Gobekli, this may still have been part of the same cult, the same religious tradi tradition that was associated with the stars of the northern sky and of course the Milky Way.